is on the verge of his first Supercross championship. He leads a pro circuit Kawasaki bunch that has dominated the class. If contenders like Yamaha's Jason Lawrence and Honda's Josh Grant are going to have a say in the title battle, they must step up now as round four of the series moves into AT&T Park in San Francisco. AMA Supercross Lights West Coast Regional Action is next on Speed. Supercross Lights West Coast Series has reached the halfway point. Round four of the eight race tour takes place in beautiful at t Park in the city by the bay, San Francisco, California. Hi everybody, I'm Ralph Shaheen. Welcome to Northern California. It's been a rainy 24 hours here in the Bay Area, but the rain seems to have passed. The track has been covered with tarps. It looks pretty good and we should have a great night of racing. So far here in the West Coast Tour, the story has been the Monster Pro Circuit Kawasaki team. Their lead rider, Ryan Villapoto, has a couple of wins and leads the points by 17 over Jason Lawrence. His teammates, Chris Gossler and Christoph Purcell, sit third and fourth in the standings. The big question tonight is, can anybody run with that crew, and especially Ryan Villapoto? For more on the story, let's introduce you now to Aaron Bates with our Progressive Direct pre-race report. Thanks, Ralph. Well, the big question is, does anybody have what it takes to beat Monster Energy Pro Circuit Kawasaki Ryan Villapoto? Well, we were able to catch up with a couple of the riders earlier this afternoon and find out what they thought it's going to take to get the job done. It's going to take a good start for sure and then uh, less mistakes. I made a lot of mistakes last weekend. Actually, I uh, was up with him first lap and made a made a move on him on the first lap and then slid out in the rhythm section and lost like four more positions so then I just I just made a lot of mistakes last weekend so if I can get rid of all those and get a good start I think it'll be pretty good it's gonna take a lot you know I've had a few bad races uh, for the first couple rounds and I'm just trying to get over that and you know last week it was pretty good I just, I stayed up and just kind of rode around the track just to get the bugs out and now that was kind of like my first race, really. So uh, we're gonna go from there, and you know, put the Sobe No Fear Samsung Honda up front. Basically, what it's gonna take is a start. Period. Um, I've really been struggling with starts, and um, you know, I've been working towards that. <clears throat> and the team, you know, Sobe No Fear Samsung Honda. Everybody's been working really hard towards uh, getting us up there, and I think that'll do the trick. Like you said, I've been riding really well and felt comfortable. So it's basically gonna take a start. Well, you know, the Kawasaki bikes are, are really good this year, and the last year were really good, and Villapoto is on it, man. Uh, everybody knows that uh, he's having a really good uh, season so far, and it's going to take a lot to be with him, you know, just to run, run with him. Just got to put a really hard 15 laps, and, uh, you know, just expect the best for sure. Uh, get a good start and, and be with him, not be scared. Well, it's been raining on and off all day long. Practice has been cut back. Jeff, how is this going to affect these guys down on the racetrack? Thanks, Aaron. As you can see, the weather's already affected the race course. The track was covered with plastic before practice. When they pull the plastic off, any of the moisture that was left on top would run to the sides or to the bottom of the jumps, creating extremely ruddy situation. Still with the chance of rain tonight, there's a chance that the race course could look like that for the main event. When we come back, we'll take a lap of practice with Rockstar Suzuki's Troy Adams. We're on board with Rockstar Energy Suzuki's Troy Adams for a lap of practice. I want you guys to keep in mind that first practice was uh, canceled today and the riders only got one chance. And uh, the track uh, took a little while to develop. Got a pretty good rhythm section here. As long as we don't get any more rain tonight, you're going to see uh, most of the riders triple through a couple of those sections on and off a couple tabletops into the first triple jump, which uh, at the end of practice session was extremely rutted on the face. Second triple jump, which uh, once again got super rutted, cut across the start straight into the big long whoop section. They made the whoops a little different this week. They're more rollers, they're spaced apart about two feet more than normal. I think the riders are really going to like it. 
Over a double and over the finish with Roy Adams. All right, Jeff, thanks. It should be a challenging track here tonight in AT&T Park. Well, the riders are in the gate getting set for the first Supercross Lights heat race. So let's check in one more time before the gate drops. Here's Aaron Bates with another Progressive Direct pre-race report. Well, guys, take a look at the number 338 of Jason Lawrence behind us here, coming off the best performance he's had yet in his career. He's one guy that's been doing the rain dance all day long, just hoping that it starts to pour down. Well, so far, the rain has held off for the most part. The soil is a little bit soft, but he did claim this. If it does rain tonight, he is taking home this win. That's a big statement. We'll see if it pans out. I'm not so sure he's going to see the rain he's hoping for. Here's our starting grid brought to you by Dunlop tonight. We've got some of those very fast Kawasaki riders in here, including Chris Gossler. They have dominated the point standing so far this season in this class, but Jeff, Jason Lawrence really came on strong last week. Well, he has had a, uh, a couple of good races here to start the season, and just he looked very comfortable last week. Here's our Supercross lights up close. Top nine will come straight out of this heat race and go to the main event. It's a six-lap affair. Chris Gossler, the fast qualifier in this group of the 46-6. Of course, Gossler on that monster pro circuit Kawasaki. There he is, the 102, right in the center. There's our 32nd board. That's going to tilt sideways. She's going to run through the mud, and we'll be racing here soon. Gosler, the first one out of the gate. That was uh, going to be a really slippery first turn there. You'll notice the track's going to look kind of shiny right now. That's because they've taken uh, the tractors and the dozers and uh, they've actually bladed the track, smoothed it all out. It's going to be a little bit soft on top before a couple of lines, a couple of, uh, uh, you know, get worked into the track. Steve Boniface on another Kawasaki sits in second. And then it's the Honda of Josh Grant, number 24. Sitting in third. Actually, it looks like it's the 74. Yeah, it's the 74 of Kyle Partridge. And there's Grant right along with him on the 24. Grant sneaking to the inside there, not quite getting the pass made yet. Grant's uh, coming off of a couple of injuries there to start the season, but in the single qualifying practice that they had today, he was extremely fast. And, you know, this this kid is, uh, he's super determined. So, see if he can get up to the front of this heat race and get a good starting position. Whoa, and a little contact. Grant survives, but the KTM rider goes down. That was Josh Hansen. He's still down right now. You see when the... Whew. Hanson landed and just, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Grant landed. And, uh, let's see what happened to Hanson here. He's on the far inside. Yeah, and Grant lands and initially cuts that way and just completely took the front wheel out of Josh Hanson. He looks to be a little bit dizzy right now. You notice he was having trouble keeping his balance. He might have rung his bell when he, uh, when he hit the dirt. There's Chris Gossler, Monster Pro Circuit, Kawasaki, who has been putting in some great rides this year. And, uh, you know, he, he's, he's one of these riders that under Mitch Payton's direction, Mitch seems to, to bring the best out of him. You know, he challenges him to be a better racer and to work harder week to week. And uh, for a guy like Chris Gossler, that produces good results. Well, they've been looking for him to step it up a little bit. Even though he's been running good, they still weren't sure he was running to his full potential so far this year. He had a very good season last year, and I think they were looking for Chris to come out and be right there right away. Here's Jason Lawrence in blue on the number 338. He's chasing Josh Grant. This is a battle for fourth position. You notice there, Grant kind of stopped in the middle of the turn. Jason Lawrence tripled. Oh, contact again. Same corner Grant had problems the last time. Oh, and he takes out one of the officials. You know, he's down there on that wet plywood that they put down over the baseball field. And as you can see, that rear wheel is spinning. It's like ice down there. Grant can't get going. And the Sobe No Fear Honda is down again. 
Meanwhile, Lawrence got back and continued on. But he did lose some positions. No problems for our race leader, Chris Gossler. His best time so far, a 45-8, Jeff. He's running pretty quick. Yeah, he's looking great. He's in a great position getting that lead here. He's not catching any of the roost from the other riders. You see them come in, and Lawrence just completely drills Grant, pushes him off the track, and Grant keeps it on two wheels until he hits this plywood. Lawrence just really intentionally goes for the pass. I don't think he intended to slide out. And then you notice, as you follow the screen, whoo, when the flagger just gets taken out, gets his legs flipped right out from under him. The Astrid medical crew attending to the flagger. And Gossler continues to lead. Well, knowing both of those riders, Grant and Lawrence, uh, I think there's going to be some words exchanged back in the pits. We're on the final lap. Remember the names as they come scroll across the top of your screen in red. All need to improve to get a transfer spot. Top nine names are listed in green. They hold the transfer positions. Gossler certainly has one of those as he leads it here on the final lap. Checkered flag for Chris Gossler. And that'll make Mitch Payton and the gang happy as he brings them another checkered flag this season. Boy, this team has been so strong. Yeah, that's the way to do it. You get out there, get that good heat race win, get comfortable, get a great uh, great starting spot also. Kyle Partridge, Chatfield, Dusty Clatt, Michael Willard. Well, Jason Lawrence fought back to seven. He's going to get a transfer. The final spot is going to go to Vernon McKinney. But Chris Gossler on the 102 is going to get the win. And we'll be right back. Speed news time ever. The NASCAR Dual 150s from Daytona coming to Speed Channel. Thursday, February 15th, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, live. Well, we thought there might be some heated words after that one. Here comes Jason Lawrence on the right, going after Josh Grant in the gray. Remember, those two got together on the racetrack. They had to be separated by teammates and workers. Finally, Lawrence made his way to the pits. Here's the results. Everybody down to that yellow line, the top nine riders going straight on to the main event. And that includes our winner, Chris Gossler, who is with Aaron. Well, these guys only had 15 minutes of practice in total today. Chris, do you kind of consider this heat race an additional practice before the main event? Yeah, for sure. I mean, with one practice, I mean, just had to go out there and get the track dial down as quick as we could today. And uh, it's actually holding up pretty good at, with all the rain and stuff. Congratulations. Great job out there. Thank you very much. This month, the most tricked out show on television returns for another sizzling season on speed. Unique whips with some of the wildest rides and stars like Pamela Anderson. Will Castro whips cars into shape. Unique whips returns February 21st only on speed. Here's a look at our Supercross lights up close for heat number two. Once again, the top nine in this six lap race will go straight to the main event. Everybody else to the last chance qualifier. And the guy to beat here is Ryan Villapoden, you can see he is the fastest so far in the class, the 45-1. Here's our Dunlop starting grid for heat number two. Villapoden is going to have to deal with Josh Hill, Martin Davalos, Jake Weimer. Those are probably some of the fastest names. But Matthew Lemoyne on that 630, he's really come on strong so far, Jeff, this season. Yeah, and he's been getting great starts. And in this heat race, since the race is so short, that's a good, uh, good way to uh, win that heat. Well, it's also very important as we see the 32nd board because the lap times are pretty quick, so you don't have a lot of time to waste, and getting a good start is so important. Yeah, the lap times are going to be down into the 40s here in San Francisco, and a uh, good start's going to be critical. And uh... Troy Adams giving you the onboard view. Here we go. went right in front of him on the 73. And it looks like the 577 and Martin Davalos gets the whole shot. Yeah, Davalos had a great race at uh, one of the lights warm up races up in Toronto and uh, had, had some disappointing rides after that. But it seems like it really picked it up and the Red Bull KTM team has uh, started figuring some things out and he's 
out there leading this heat race. It's a great start to the race in San Francisco here. Number 51, of course, is the man everybody's talking about this year, Ryan Villapoto. Monster Pro Circuit Kawasaki run. Just made short work of Weimer there. He just uh, just didn't waste any time in the turns. He's just so aggressive. And, and I was watching him in practice, and he is just attacking every, every inch of the track. And that's why he's the fastest guy. And sometimes he runs as fast as lap times as most of the Supercross riders. And he's right on Davalos. Davalos on the 577 gets a good look at Villapoto, who blows right past him over the triple. I mean, that's just pure aggression. Over those tabletops where you step on and off. Oh, Davalos on course. And remember how slippery it is when you get over onto the, uh, the plywood. Yeah, definitely. Davalos was lucky he didn't get on the brakes too hard. Still in third place. That was a great save. Tucks in behind Jake Weimer on the 73. Comes inside of him. And that was a, looking strong. That was a great move. That was really aggressive, and that was a confident move by Davalos, where he wasn't going to stay behind Weimer. He's, he's not content with that, and uh, just hugged the inside. That's Josh Hill right behind them on the number 58 in blue. Hill holds down fourth, and it's Daniel Sani behind that. Hill has suffered from bad starts this season, but he's had uh, plenty of time and plenty of practice at passing riders. Fortunately, last week, he passed enough riders to get up into the podium. Hill in the blue right there, number 58. Trying to pick up another spot. Weimer holds him back for a little while longer. He talked about he's been struggling with his starts, Jeff, on a quick lap time like tonight. That's really going to hurt your position. Yeah, because the 15 lap Light's main event here end up being uh, 13, 14 minutes, and that's not much time. I'm sure riders, when they get a bad start, they're wishing this was uh, like a national motocross event where you get 30 minutes plus two laps, but that's not the case. It's not how we do it here in the Supercross Lights. How's the track holding up so far? We've, like we said, had a very wet day and a half here in the Bay Area. I think the track is great right now because uh, they worked out some of the ruts. Oh, Hill right to the inside on Weimer. Still couldn't get it done. Like I was saying, they worked out some of the ruts, and I think it's getting really tacky right now. The track's super fun to ride. Second lights race, first or second race of the night program. A couple little ruts you see Foreman. Nothing real dangerous, nothing tricky. The track is going to be super fast right now. Villa Photo last year here in San Francisco looked like he was going to maybe get his first main event win, but made a big mistake in the feature, in the main event. But the main event last year, Jeff, was super muddy. Let's go back and take a look at this situation here with Villa Photo. Yeah, Villa Photo triples, just cuts back down. And watch over these tabletops. He just scrubs off the last one. And it was like a bike length that he, that he gained by, just by staying lower and uh, hitting it with more speed. That was a pass on Martin Davalos for the lead. And if you notice here, he's rolling. He's jumping two here and then tripling the next section and tripling again into this turn, which he's the only lights rider that is doing this. That is why he has the fastest lap. The names in green across the top of your screen, all the transfer spots here on the final lap. He never seems to let up even when he gets out front. Yeah, he's being very cautious here. He didn't jump the second triple there on that last lap because of these lappers, but. Checkered flag for Ryan Villapoto. And he's again, he's going straight to the main event and he will be the guy everybody will be thinking about as they line up in the gate in a little while here in at t Park. I'm telling you, Villapoto has got things dialed in right now. He just. He is showing so much confidence and so much maturity on the bike. And uh, I could, he is really pressuring himself to uh, continue getting quicker with each race because it's only going to be a couple years and he's going to have to be racing James Stewart and Chad Reed in the Supercross class. We'll get a chance to talk to Ryan Villapoto when we come back to at t Park here in San Francisco. California is the home to Major League Baseball San Francisco Giants. Tonight, however, the field is muddied up and it's the Amped Mobile Supercross Lights West Coast Series. 
Hi, everybody. Ralph Shaheen and Jeff Emick high above the field here, enjoying the racing action. The heat races are in the books, and it looks like it's the Monster Pro Circuit crew once again, Jeff, who are the fastest. But could Villapoto be beaten by his teammate tonight, Gossler? Well, I don't know. He's been the fastest guy all year. Uh, he looked great in his heat race. I think there's 20 other guys, though, that got something to say about Villapoto winning. So he's going to have to put in a good main event, uh, 15 solid laps, and keep it on two wheels. February 21st on speed, it's the Forza Motorsports Showdown. What began as a video game comes to life as amateur drivers push their skills and cars to the max. Find out who's got the right stuff to be a Forza champion. Forza Motorsports Showdown premiering February 21st on speed. Here are the results from heat number two for the Supercross Lights. Everybody from Ryan Villapoto down to Michael Lapaglia going to the main event. Chris Blows will lead the rest of the group on to the last chance qualifier. Well, let's meet. Ryan Ryan, who's standing by with Aaron Bates. Well, not only did he have the fastest practice today, but the fastest heat race as well. Ryan, rain or shine, how do you manage to excel at every track? Uh, you know, just try to, during practice days, you know, try to work on everything. And, uh, you know, coming here to San Francisco, you know, last year was real mud fest and uh, kind of looked like that way this year. But, uh, you know, luckily it held off. And uh, mainly the track's just tacky and a little bit slippery. So, you know, hopefully the rain holds out. And uh, I couldn't have done it without all my sponsors, mom and dad. Uh, Jack Fox Parts Limited, Monster Pro Circuit Kawasaki, and uh, Jeff Fox of Parts Limited, Thor, Maxima, Bridgestone, Scott, Vans, KMC, Ant Mobile, Toyota of Escondido, you know, all the guys, thanks. Ryan Villapoto, one more rider that's doing the rain dance here tonight. This month, the most tricked out show on television returns for another sizzling season on speed. Unique whips with some of the wildest rides and stars like Pamela Anderson. Will Castro whips cars into shape. Unique whips returns February 21st, only on speed getting ready for the last chance qualifier for the Supercross Lights. Should be a good one. Some big names stuck here in the last chance qualifier. The biggest names probably in this one gonna be number 24, Josh Grant. You see him way down on the bottom. And joining him here, number 100, Josh Hansen. Yeah, that was a crazy heat race. Uh, Hansen went down because of Grant. And then Jason Lawrence takes out Josh Grant and he goes down. Both of them end up in the last chance qualifier. Here's our up close, 22 riders, top four. will fill the last four spots in tonight's main event. Might be a little friction between these two guys, but they need to focus on getting the whole shot, qualifying for the main event, not worrying about each other. That's, the, that's what he needs to do here. Protected the inside a little bit. Grant out front. Being chased by Chris Close on the 177. Close coming right after him in the blue and white riding gear. We got Hanson sitting back in third right now. We're gonna need to uh, put in a solid ride here and not only qualify for the main event, which is important, you want to get the top four here in the LCQ, but you also want to get yourself dialed in. You want to get some fast laps. You want to get into a rhythm and get your head straight so you can go put in 15 of your best laps here tonight in the main. Sitting back in fourth in the final transfer spot is a 240 of Bradley Graham out of New Mexico. There's a good look at Bradley on his Kawasaki. Bradley's a, a great rider. He's uh, been uh, progressing. I had the opportunity at the amateur motocross level last year to actually race against this guy in a couple of the qualifying races. We were banging bars. Unfortunately, he's out there riding Supercross, and uh, I don't have to deal with this. I can just talk about it. Logan Darian is the rider right behind him. Logan's on the number 725 out of Colorado, a Honda mounted rider. He has He's got to get going because he's one spot out of a transfer. That, of course, belongs to Graham right there. Let's go back and take a look at the gate dropping and the charge to the whole shot. Coming from way on the outside here. 
You notice Grant pushes all the way wide in that first turn. Super slippery there. Had three bike links. That was uh, nice and easy for him. Out front is Grant. Lapping in the 42nd range. Final lap here. Now, as we see the names scroll across the top of the screen, I'm going to notice uh, Bader Manet was a uh, lights champion main event winner from way back in the 80s. He's even older than I am, Ralph, and That's still, hard to out, still out there doing it. <laughs> he's an incredible motorcycle rider, but it does not look like he's going to get it into the lights main event tonight. Bader listed back in about 20th on number 987. Josh Grant on his way to the checkered flag. Checkered flag for Josh Grant. Took him a while to get there, but he's going to the main event as a winner of the last chance qualifier. Hanson, Graham, and Blows fill out the final three spots. Here's a good look at Josh Grant. He'll have an opportunity to talk to his mechanic, make some changes, and then get ready for the main. Speed. 21st on Speed is the Forza Motorsports Showdown. What began as a video game comes to life as amateur drivers push their skills and cars to the max. Find out who's got the right stuff to be a Forza champion. Forza Motorsports Showdown premiering February 21st on Speed. Here's a good look at the Bay Bridge, which connects San Francisco to Oakland and Berkeley. And a look inside AT&T Park here in San Francisco, getting ready for the Supercross Lights main event. And before we do that, we have to have a progressive direct pre-race support with Aaron Bates. And Aaron, the action has been both on and off the track tonight. It most definitely is, Ralph. You saw the altercation that took place in their Heat 1 race. I'm talking about none other than Josh Grant, Josh Hansen, and Jason Lawrence, three guys that are prone to getting themselves into a little bit of mischief. Of course, all three of these guys have different sides of the story, but the common denominator seems to be Josh Grant. The AMA took them each aside. They spoke with them. They've given them their warning. Clean racing is what they expect out of these guys, but if you notice, all three of them are lined up fairly close to each other. Tempers are flying as this gate gets ready to drop. Well, that's going to make turn one real interesting. Let's show you. The starting lineup for the main event. Brought to you by Dunlop. Villapoto and Gossler have been the fastest so far tonight. Davalos and Boniface have been pretty quick. But Lawrence, and there you see Grant and Hansen side by side, Jeff. Yeah, it's interesting. You get these uh, lights riders like this. I remember having altercations like that myself, and you just don't quite have the maturity level to keep your head straight there. He won winner was Gossler. Villapoto took heat two. Grant had to come to the last chance qualifier, but he won it. 22 riders, 15 laps as we look at our Supercross lights up close. Now that confrontation moved its way up into the tunnel after as well. Here's the envoy from Troy Adams. And it's Gossler getting the whole shot on the 102. Got number 51 in that second position right there behind him. And how long will Villapoto stay in second? Not long, he's side by side with his teammate. And into the lead goes Ryan Villapoto. Got Davalos with another great start here tonight. This kid's got something to prove. Davalos in third of the KTM. Notice the uh, track builders. Left a little, quite a bit of ruts in these bowl turns. Look for a lot of lines uh, developing, and actually the track should uh, deteriorate quite a bit. Probably drop the lap times down a little bit here in the main event. There's Grant on the 24. That's a good start considering he, uh, you know, had a pretty bad gate pick going through the LCQ. He's in fourth behind Davos on the Red Bull KTM, who's giving Gosler a run for his money on the Monster Pro Circuit Kawasaki number 102. Jeff, you commented on the reps being left in the corners. Do you like that, or do you think they should have taken them out? Well, as a rider, I would say to fix them and make the track all nice and perfect. Uh, as a viewer here, I'd like to see the track deteriorate a little bit. I think it makes for a little bit better racing. 
Let's go back and take a look at the whole shot that Gosler got on the rest of the field. Coming from about five gates on the inside, just got a great drive. You notice he pushes wide here, but nobody snuck on the inside and a nice clean start for Chris Gosler. Davalos, the winner at Toronto. He's on the KTM coming after. Battling for second, challenging Gosler. He's putting a lot of pressure on him. He's, he's next to him. He hasn't quite been able to make the pass, but he's shown him a wheel all over the place. Aaron, the 577 of Martin Davalos. We all expected big things out of him after his win in Toronto. Maybe tonight's going to be the night. Yeah, most definitely, Ralph. And I got to admit his attitude right now. He's pumped right up. He was expecting it to pour down rain earlier this afternoon. That hasn't happened quite yet. Now he's going for a hard charge. He said he's been working on nothing but starts, and obviously it's paid off for him. The rider out of South America now living in Georgia. Oh, down goes Gosler, and Davos goes right into him, and they're both out. Gosler lost the front end there, and Davos had nowhere to go. Gosler still on the ground. Davos trying to kickstart his motorcycle. Everybody else getting around Gosler. Yeah, Gosler's not moving there. Uh, we'll have to check that replay and see exactly what happened when Davalos went over him. I think you're right, Jeff. I think the front end just went away from Gosler. As you can see, he wants to follow the line through here. Loses the front end early. Oh, man, that and was Davalos a hard runs hit. Over. Now, now what happened, they take and they blade the start. They make it all smooth. They take the tractor going across there, and it makes it a little bit slippery. Mm -hmm. And his, his uh, right arm, left arm, gets caught under the bike there. Just nothing Davalos could do, and he can't get the bike restarted. The medical crew attending to Chris Gosler. Meanwhile, his teammate, Bill Aparo, stretching out the lead. It's about six seconds over Josh Grant, who now moves to second. Jake Weimer, third, Kyle Partridge is fourth, and Boniface is up to fifth. Yeah, Villapoto putting in some more great laps, really charging hard, and uh, him and his trainer, Randy Lawrence, work extremely hard during the week. It pays off on the, on the race night. Um, constantly working on speed, constantly working on fitness. I mentioned earlier, you know, he's going to be riding the lights class one more season after this, so not only is he training to win these races, but he's trying to prepare himself, get up to the level to race against James Stewart Reed and all the other Supercross guys. Fourth place is at Green Kawasaki, number 141. That's Steve Boniface. Kyle Partridge is on the 74 right behind him. And behind him comes Josh Hill on the 58 and then Jason Lawrence up into seventh on the 338. You notice these riders cutting low out of the turns, the outside, the, the high line there on the bull turns, the ruts are getting so deep. And the physical competition continues. Partridge pushes his way past Boniface, but that opens the door for Hill, and here comes Lawrence picking up the spot. And yeah. Boniface loses four in the process. Yeah, and that's, that's what happens, you know, you end up getting there, you're battling other guys, you think you're gonna block past one guy, you got two other guys, you know, ready to attack just behind that. Troy Adams, meanwhile, runs around in 11th, giving us his view. We're coming back for more of the lights from AT&T Park. Villapoto trying to win his second race in a row as the Amped Mobile AMA Supercross lights have reached the halfway point of their season. Round four of eight. And Villapoto, the points leader, out front once again. Making it look easy. You can see all these ruts in the jump faces being pretty uh, conserved, a huge rut in the bowl turn. Jeff, last year Ryan looked like he was going to get his first lights class win here at AT&T Park. It was an extremely muddy race. He made basically a bit of a rookie mistake on the finish line jumping and cost him the victory. 
He's a much more mature rider in just one season, isn't he? Well, it's it's great seeing uh, riders like him grow up through these, and uh, you know now he's now he's the premier lights rider. When one year ago uh, he was still trying to get his first win. Aaron Martin Davalos was involved in a big incident with Chris Gosler. How's he doing? Well, I don't know. I'm going to ask him right now. Martin, obviously frustrated. What went on out there? I don't know. You know, I was feeling great today. I was riding really good. Chris was holding me up a little bit. I wanted to get around him. But, uh, you know, he made a mistake, and that messed me up. I crashed. I could have started my bike, and it's so frustrating, man. I was feeling so good. I knew I could have I could have been out there. But, you know, I'm going to come back next weekend and just do the same thing. I, I, I got a feel of it, and hopefully we'll see you next weekend. Great group. See you next weekend at Anaheim. Thank you very much. Nothing for Martin to be upset about. That incident with Chris Gosler, literally nothing he could do. Is Gosler just lost the front end and went down in front of him. Davalos did ride very good, Jeff. Probably the best we've seen him ride since Toronto, where he won earlier this year. Davalos yeah. looks looking at a podium finish tonight. Yeah, so so disappointing to have a good man event going and uh, just have an unfortunate accident like that. Here's the 24, Josh Grant. Currently in second place. Almost eight seconds behind our leader, though. Comfortable second place here. Uh, been a crazy night for Josh Grant. Yeah, been a, a crazy night. So, uh, I'm, you know, Josh, I'm sure would like to be out front winning this event, but uh, the way the night's been going, uh, second place on the podium here is, is going to be just fine. He'll be happy with that, and he'll use that to build on. And uh, I'm sure he wants to get up there and battle with Villapoto and beat him a couple times here in this Lights West series. Just about four to go. Well, we talked about at the beginning of the show what it was going to take to beat Villapoto. And Jeff, I'm not so sure anybody in this field has an answer for that question. Well, it all starts with uh, with getting the hole shot and getting out in front, having a clear track. These guys have had to work their way through some of the other riders. And, uh, you know, if you let Villapoto get out front there, he's gone. Jake Weimer on the 73 runs in third. Come up a little short there on that triple. That's one of those 65-foot uh, triples that I think you're getting a little higher than 50 feet there. It's uh, just really been popping the riders up all, all day. Three to go for Jake. See uh, Josh has a number scroll across the screen there. Josh Hill running for it. He's been put in some pretty solid rides the last two or three weeks. Way through the rhythm section. Here's a fight for six. In here is the 141 of Steve Boniface, Jason Lawrence, and Lapaglia as well on the 138. We didn't see it on screen, but Lawrence went down uh, somewhere by the second triple. I seen him sloshing through some of the mud on the side of the track. Getting back on, he gave up a couple of positions there. That's why he's running where he's at. He was a little bit, he was a little bit further up earlier in the race. You notice he's following Boniface right here through this main line. Um, you know, rider like that really you need to get out of that fast line. Uh, you know, if you have a chance of making a pass. Well, Boniface slipped a little bit going into that corner. I thought that was going to open the door for Jason. Maybe here. Yeah, stalled a little bit to the inside. That could be the move. Watch what Lawrence is going to do. He's going to double and triple and triple again into the turn. Clean pass. Just, you know, three, four bike lengths quicker down that one section by jumping it like Lawrence did. Now he's going to go after Kyle Partridge as we go back to the front with our leader, Brian Villapoto. Seven and a half seconds in front of Josh Grant. Making it nice and easy here. Just throwing a triple in at the end of the section. Here's Grant on the 24. Grant does the same section. That's, that's how he keeps it there. Uh, same gap uh, to Villapoto that he's had for a few laps now. Villapoto making his way to the checkered flag. And back-to-back -back wins. He's got the points lead. He'll extend that on his way to his first Supercross lights. Championship. Ryan Villapoto, the winner in AT&T Park.
Fantastic ride. I mean, this kid is on a roll, and he is confident. He, is, he has been awesome. The domination of the Monster Pro Circuit Kawasaki team continues. Villaboto back-to-back -back wins. An impressive performance for the young rider on number 51. We're coming back to San Francisco after these words here on Speed. It's here at AT&T Park in San Francisco, and Ryan Villapoto claimed it. He's made his way to the top step of the podium. Let's show you the results. Villapoto takes the win. Josh Grant is right behind him. Jake Weimer is third. Josh Hill is fourth. And Jason Lawrence battles his way up to fifth. Here's Aaron with our winner. Well, I tell you what, the man that has taken three out of four wins, which marks the halfway point of the West Coast Light Series. Ryan, what does this do for your confidence, extending your margin the way it is? Well, you know, every weekend, you know, getting first, you know, there's a points gap in between first and second. So you get like three points if you win. And then, uh, you know, hopefully what I'd like to do is wrap it up before Seattle. So uh, I can go on that, that eight-week break that we have and, uh, you know, not have to worry about going into Seattle and having to win, you know, and putting a lot of pressure on. And, you know, couldn't have done without the whole team, Monster Pro Circuit, Kawasaki, and, uh, you know, Jeff Fox from Parts Unlimited, Thor, Maxima, Doug from Bridgestone, Scott, Vans, KMC, Ant Mobile, Toyota Escondido, you know, everybody that's helped me, Lord Jesus, keep me safe. I'd just like to say thanks. Well, congratulations to you. Not a speck of dirt on him, but his teammate, that's not quite the case. I wanted to give you a really brief update of what happened with Chris Gossler out there. He was conscious when he was put on the back of the Asterix Mobile Medic Unit Mule. He's taken away. He was breathing fine. Everything seemed to be okay, but we will get a further evaluation, a little bit of an update as what's taking place with Chris Gossler. All right, Aaron, thanks. Of course, this is all part of the road to Las Vegas. That's where we'll have the East-West Shootout for the Supercross Lights. May, first weekend in May, and you'll see it live here on Speed. We hope you'll join us either in Vegas, live at Sam Boyd Stadium, or on the TV here on Speed. Let's head back down to Aaron. Well, he's been waiting for this moment all season long, and it's finally here. You've made it up onto the podium. What is this doing for your confidence, Jake? Oh, man, it's awesome to finally get on the podium in my second year and just finally get here. It feels so good. So, yeah, I just got to thank my team, Sobe, No Fear, Honda, Naps, Rams. Well, everybody's been working really hard, and it's just good to finally get up here and pay them for it. So I'm glad. The monkey is finally off his back tonight. In the point standings for the West Coast Series, Ryan Villapoto now extends his lead to 26 over Jason Lawrence. Here's Aaron Bates once again. Well, it's been a long, tough road, especially for this guy, Josh Grant, so far this season. Josh, what made the difference tonight? Um, I don't know. I think it was a combination of things. I rode real good and uh, just felt really comfortable on this track. And I uh, went out and rode Glen Helen on Thursday and practiced in the ruts, and I think it paid off for this weekend. But, uh, you know, I couldn't have done it without the Sobe, No Fear, Samsung, Honda guys. And, you know, they're the ones that got me here and uh, want to stay here. So it's, uh, it's good, and I'm glad I'm up here. It's been a long, long road ahead. So. Jeff, the Monster Pro Circuit Kawasaki team continues their dominance in the lights class. Well, Ryan Villapoto did not uh, disappoint tonight. I'm sure Mitch Payton and the guys over there at Pro Circuit are pretty happy. This kid is just amazing how he is, uh, he just keeps getting faster and more confident and uh, you know more, more uh, mature with each passing race. He says he wants to wrap it up before the last round in Seattle. The series moves on to Anaheim next week. We'll be there, we hope you'll join us. For Aaron Bates and Jeff Emig, I'm Ralph Shaheen. So long from San Francisco, congratulations, Ryan, once again.